Black Voters. Joining us now is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Cliff Albright. Cliff, it's great to have you. It's not that a majority of black voters in these polls are turning to Trump. It's that more of them are, right? You look at the New York Times in November and you see that in the crucial swing states, you have 22 percent of black voters saying they would back Trump. It was 8 percent last time around. Why is there this weakness? Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, Poppy. I think, you know, I don't want, I don't ever really give um, polls this far out a lot of credence. Um, interestingly enough, I went back and looked at polls from July of 2020 and uh, President Biden or then Joe Biden uh, was still at 71 percent, literally the exact same number that this poll shows him at now. The thing we got to keep in mind is, you know, polls can say one thing, but if you look at the way that black folks have actually voted, um, these estimates, this is not the first time we've heard estimates of, of 20 percent from Trump. We heard that uh, Herschel Walker might get 20 percent in Georgia. That didn't happen. Uh, we heard that Trump would get 20 percent before and that didn't happen. In fact, if you look at black men, interestingly, in, in 2016, he got 14 percent of black men. And in, in 2020, in 2020, he only got 12 percent of black men. And so the, the number is actually going in the reverse. Mm. Uh, but you're seeing a lot of talk about these polls. But, but if you look at the way that we vote, um, I, it's not going to happen. It's not a massive shift. The bigger question, though, is whether or not folks actually turn out to vote at all. There's always that third choice of not voting for either candidate. Sure. And maybe, you know, maybe that is who you were speaking to when you talked to The Washington Post. I thought it was fascinating reading over the weekend your comments to The Post saying, look, it's the sky's not falling for the Biden campaign. But you did say, Cliff, it just might be drizzling. How do they turn this around? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's not all doom and gloom, but there are some signs. You know, the main thing is, and to answer your question, how they turn it around is you've got to talk to people. you got to give people good information about what's been done. The most common question we have is, well, I don't know exactly what he's done. Right. And so they've got to improve the message. And a lot of times when people say that they're just talking about the message itself. But when we talk about it, we mean you've got to improve the message, meaning the substance. You've got to mm -hmm. improve uh, who the messenger is. It's got to be a trusted messenger. You got to improve where you deliver the message. He was in a, a church um, these past couple of times when he's come to, to South Carolina. You know, yes, you got to go to churches, but you also you got to invest in black media. You got to stream things on the things that younger folks watch. You got to mm -hmm. put it wherever people go at the club, barbershop or whatever that you got to improve where you go. And then most importantly, you got to improve how frequently that message is, is yeah. delivered. But the good news for them is that there's actually some substance there about things that have mm -hmm. been done. That would, I was just having the image of President Biden at the club <laughs> speaking to black voters. That would be quite a campaign stop. I'll wait for that one. But in all seriousness, on younger voters, that's actually, and polls only go so far, but that's actually where most of his weakness is that I think is concerning to the mm -hmm. campaign is among younger black voters. How much of that, Cliff, do you attribute to particularly this president not calling for a ceasefire and the mounting civilian casualties in Gaza? We saw him interrupted by protesters over it just this weekend in South Carolina. Yeah, no, that is that is definitely a major issue. Um, you know, I told a high ranking person within the administration that is got to be their most concerning issue. When you look at the poll numbers, you know, black voters in general are, are disappointed with the president's policy, disappointed uh, to be generous with the president's policy in, in Gaza. But when you look at the younger black voters, it's, it's around 70 percent, 75 percent, 80 percent. Um, who are not just disappointed, but just outright mad about it. And and that can be an issue. I mean, wars have changed presidencies. I mean, ask Lyndon B. Johnson. And so, you know, they really have got to look at that policy. But the other thing that they've got to do is talk to young folks about the things that they have done, the things going on uh, with with. Uh, police accountability, which had a lot of young people in the streets back in 2020. And this administration has actually done things, but they haven't talked about it enough. You know, talk but, about um, um, gun gun reform, talk about climate change, which young people care about. That won't eliminate the concerns and the, the outright anger about Gaza. But folks mm -hmm. have got to hear something that at least gives them, you know, some kind of balance to to what they are really upset about in terms of the policy in Gaza. You bring about police reform just to end on that. It's a, it's a guarantee that the president made uh, at the beginning of the administration, police reform and voting rights. And those are two like the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. We didn't see that get through major police reform didn't get through. How much does that weigh on their support? 
I mean, definitely ways. Um, you know, even even we, to be honest, at, at Black Voters Matter were critical uh, throughout 2021, saying that the administration didn't do enough, but they did eventually come out and he came out saying we've got to modify the filibuster to pass voting rights. So it's things like that, things that they tried to do but didn't exactly get done that, you know, some people are very upset about in terms yeah. of criminal justice. You know, yes, the, the George Floyd Act didn't pass largely because it was sabotaged by Tim Scott. Um, but when you look at that, the people, the fact that the, the cops that killed Breonna Tur- Turner were uh, prosecuted federally, when you look at the, the people that killed Ahmaud Arbery were prosecuted federally, um, Chauvin, who killed George Floyd, was prosecuted both um, locally and federally. When you look at no, um, no-knock no warrants being banned federally, when you look at chokeholds being banned, there are things that were actually done, but nobody really knows that because it hasn't been mm-hmm. talked about. If folks, if young folks were in the streets for these issues mm-hmm. in 2020, it's hearing that something's been done on that, short mm-hmm. of the George Floyd Act, but still that things have been done, that can also encourage people to go vote. This is a fascinating conversation, Cliff. I hope you come back soon. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Bill.